Helldivers 2 has humiliated AAA game design. Let me explain why. This is pure carnage. We are losing here. We are getting annihilated. I'm trying to jump for my life into this crater. I'm trying to reload. I'm trying to use stims. I'm trying to fight the bots. We're not going to win. We're getting absolutely annihilated here, but it doesn't matter. It is fun to try and survive until your team blow you up, which it happens quite a lot in Helldivers. And guess what? It's super fun. Again, it's something that shouldn't be fun. Goes against modern game design, having friendly fire in your game. But hey, it makes this game super fun. This is all over this mission. We've totally lost. It doesn't matter though. You fight to the end because you want to see what happens. It is so fun. This is a game that is designed with fun at the core rather than monetization. This is Stratagem Hero. Now, this is something you get if you buy the premium version of the game. So I wanted to touch on this a little bit because it's a really, really cool way of giving the player something extra in the game that is fun, that feels fun, and you can tell has been made by devs that were having fun. This is just a way of sort of training using stratagems in the game, um, which you use to call down various abilities during missions. It's cool, it's fun. This is great monetization. Loading screens are possibly the worst thing ever in modern games. If you've played Starfield, yeah, yeah, loading screens are terrible. Look at the loading screens in Helldivers 2. They are so varied, they are awesome, they all look totally different, and they really hype you up for the mission. I have done loads of missions in Helldivers 2, and I always, I'm glued to the screen. I never look away from this, look, let's just take a look at a bunch of them. They all look totally different. You can see all of the other ships out in orbit bombing the planet some of the ships will get destroyed as they're floating in orbit as well it is so cool you get these absolutely outrageous training manual tips as well which is just ridiculous this one though kind of makes sense but some of them are absolutely insane again let's jump to another planet these are all loading screens I mean, you can see in the bottom right hand corner you got the little spinny loading thing they didn't have to put this much effort into it but what they've done here and this is the master stroke of this loading screen is it really sells you on that Starship Troopers vibe. You're dropping onto that bug planet. You're dropping onto Klendathu, and you're going to absolutely destroy the bugs. That's what it feels like. It feels so goddamn awesome. This is what games should be. Games should make you feel awesome. I watch this, and I'm hyped. I'm getting ready to go down. I'm getting ready to absolutely annihilate the enemy and apparently avoiding snow, mud, water, and shrubberies. <laughs> Bit of Monty Python on the go there. What? But it's just, it's, it's insane. Like, this is so well done. It's taking an element of the game which should be boring and making it really fun. And look at this. It's it's so good. The devs have absolutely killed it here. This really sells the vibe of the game. Sells the fantasy of the game as well. So another bad design decision, which shouldn't work, but does, <laughs> is friendly fire. Now, this happens all the time in Helldivers. And it's almost part of the game. Of course, this is Arrowhead. If you guys have played Magicka, you know that was all about friendly fire back in the day. This is Helldivers 2. It's modern Arrowhead. They still embrace the chaotic nature of friendly fire in co-op games. And it really, really works. I mean, we've just been killed there by our team. And then the guy's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And everyone's laughing about it. Oh, no, no worries. It's fine. But it's going to happen again in a minute. And then he claims it's a bug. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. It doesn't matter, though, because I'm able to reinforce. And even if we all died anyway, we would still reinforce back from the ship. And again, that's a testament to the reinforce mechanic itself. If a number of players die on your team, you don't just reinforce one person. It reinforces everybody. And the way you get reinforced is dropping back from orbit like you do at the start of the mission. It's really cool. But yeah, friendly fire is embraced by this game. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be a perfect you know, mechanic. There are going to be people that will abuse friendly fire. There's going to be trolls. There's going to be all of that stuff. But still, if you're just, you know, having a good time and everyone's playing the objective and playing to win, it feels so cool when you die friendly fire. Like this, when you fire the auto cannon into the stairs in front of you and explode because you're absolutely bricking it. You're about to be annihilated by a giant terminate. <laughs> so let's talk about monetization. Now, the lead Arrowhead developer, in fact, the head of the studio, says that you need to earn the right to monetize your game. You don't just come out of the gates with a heavily monetized game and then try and, you know, rinse players. No, his ethos, his ideology is create a great game, then you can monetize. Well, let me show you the monetization system in the game at the moment. So obviously you've got to pay to buy this game, right? It's £35 in England, so it's like a $40 game. So it's not AAA priced, way more accessible than $70 or $80 games, uh, as most AAA games tend to be in this day and age. So what you get is you've got a superstore, you've got super credits. So the superstore, this is a shop. This is a premium shop. You can buy these items, right? And they cost 150, 75, 125, and 250. You can see I've got 205 of the coins available of the super credits. You can buy super credits for money, right? So you could go straight in, pay a thousand super credits for 7.99. And remember, this is exactly a thousand 
for $7.99. And what this will allow you to do is go to the War Bonds page. This is essentially what they call Battle Passes. This is a Battle Pass, but it's the, pre, the, the, the free Battle Pass. I was going to say the premium. It's not. This is the free Battle Pass. This is the premium Battle Pass. You have to buy this. It costs 1000 So you could pay $7.99 and just get 1000 straight away and unlock it. However, you can actually get credits from completing the Battle Pass, the free Battle Pass, the Battle Pass, which is part of the game. You'll see here, look, I can unlock 100 credits. And as we go through the pages, you can unlock 100. And once you get down to the fifth page, um, I believe this is 100, but then the sixth page, it goes down to 50, 50, and then 50, and then finally 50. So you can earn some credits through the free Battle Pass. This is great. Now, the way this Battle Pass works is also really good because... You've always got something to do. You've always got something to unlock. So everything costs medals. You get medals. You can see I've got nine at the moment through completing missions. When you complete a mission, you'll get medals at the end of it. If you complete three missions in like a mission block, you get bonus medals. Now, there are ways of spamming missions, and this is sort of becoming the bane of the game at the moment, where you'll join squads and all they're doing is defense missions over and over and over again, uh, where you just have to kill a certain number of enemies because they're the fastest to do, and you get... Uh, very fast uh, metal rewards and then you basically reset and go again or try and find a different different planet and keep spamming that mission but essentially you complete a mission you get medals then you can spend the medals on whatever you like you can see on this page here page two i've got everything apart from this i didn't like the look of the helmet it doesn't do anything like we bring up the stats it doesn't do anything but i just didn't like the look of it but i wanted everything else so i picked it up armor does have different stats and different effects on it you can see this one gives explosive uh, resistance damage by 50 percent, which is pretty good um and reduces recoil and then this one for example gives you more grenades so has the reduces recoil thing again but increases initial in inventory and holding capacity of grenades by plus two so there are little ways you can sort of tweak your armor and stuff but honestly i'm just picking stuff because it looks cool i mean like I'm, i've got this on at the moment i don't even care what the stats are because it's just democracy protects <laughs> it is is the effect of it but i mean it's just great it just looks so good let me get rid of that yeah look it just looks amazing so yeah, that's the monetization of the game. Now, there is a bit more customization, I guess we can show. Uh, if you, oh, in fact, I'll show you the premium uh, battle pass. So there are weapons in this. In terms of whether they're OP or super strong or whatever, uh, I, I, the way the weapons work in this game specifically, they're kind of like side grades. Yeah, there are certain weapons that are better against certain things, like the auto cannon is really good against terminates because almost all of them you can destroy them. Whereas against the automatons, some of their units are basically invulnerable to damage unless you're hitting them in the weak spots. And it can be quite difficult to get behind a tank or behind one of the bigger units. Um, so yeah, you can kind of, you know, you change your loadout based on what mission you're on. If you're a defensive mission, um, maybe you're going to come in with more of the turret support abilities, you know, things like that. But yeah, there are weapons, things like this. It's an explosive liberator light armor penetrating you know and you got I, to be honest it's just like whatever i think this is fine also you get premium currency look back from this which again is great more premium currency good stuff now there is another uh this isn't so much monetization it's rather customization of your character so if we go over and take a look at this there is a um inventory or equipment armory i guess screen and this is where you can select what you want as your weapon now currently i've got the energy-based last scythe which is okay <laughs> it's just a big laser but i don't think it's as effective as for example the breaker which might be a bit meta at the moment but i really hate meta discussions around this game because it's just a game for having fun like forget what the meta is don't just like because people have been getting kicked out of groups if they've not had the you know the correct loadout and whatever pretty much anything will work and just go out there and have fun like come on guys this isn't like some overwatch style valorant competitive game just go and have fun um, so yeah, you, you can change the loadout. Like I could go, okay, I'm going to go close range, let's say with the breaker, maybe my secondary weapon, I'll go back to the pistol, does quite a bit of damage, but I quite like the redeemer because it's like an automatic pistol. And then we've got things like grenades and I've been keeping the high explosive just because it's generally good against most stuff. Frag grenades, obviously good against uh, groups of enemies, but I will unlock more equipment. Like, so like I said, the way I'd unlock the equipment is I'd go to the battle pass and as you scroll through, you can see um there'll be uh, i think there's a grenade here so there's a grenade that i've not unlocked this is a g16 impact grenade you would imagine this explodes on impact right but i don't have this because i prioritize getting the laser rifle because it was a laser rifle you know like i haven't got the smg here i could have got the smg maybe i'll go back and get it but there's always going to be the incentive to do this because if you keep running missions and winning you will always get medals so you're always going to have medals to spend on and this again is with the progression systems in the game 
once you've got tons of medals and you've been through this and you've spammed it out, then it is going to get a bit boring because you are going to be waiting for more things to get added to the game. Now, the devs have said there is more content coming and notably there are mechs coming to this game, which I think are going to be absolutely incredible. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the customization of the character and the monetization in terms of battle pass and the store. But there is one other thing and this is the ship. So the ship itself is also something that you can customize along with your character. And I'm assuming that in the future, you will be able to get new ships, different types of ships, maybe bigger ships and all of that stuff. But if you go to ship management, there's a couple of different things going on here. So we've only got the destroyer available, which I think in the future, like I said, there'll probably be different ships you can get. Uh, mine is called Lady of Freedom. <laughs> Everything is about democracy, freedom, justice and all of that stuff. So... What we've got here are the stratagems. Now, these are the things that you use during the mission where you use the directional keys or I think you use the D-pad um, if you're on console or whatever it is. I don't play on console, but basically you have to input commands up, down, left, right, whatever, to call in the support. And you can see the ones I've got unlocked, right? So machine gun, everyone gets that. Anti-material rifle, I don't have that. I don't have the stalwart because it's like a small, it's like a saw machine gun, I guess. Expandable anti-tank, th this is okay, but it's just a one-shot job and then you're done this is really really good the recoilless rifle i was using this to blow up drop ships um from the automatons because you hit the engine and it blows the whole drop ship up and it can sometimes blow most of the bots up it's really powerful but again you'll see the things here i haven't unlocked so railgun i can't unlock this because i'm not level 20 yet but when i am level 20 i'll be able to unlock it and um, let's just use flamethrower as an example right so flamethrower i haven't unlocked it, it looks incredible i probably should I don't know whether it's too strong, but again, I don't care. It just looks crazy. Be good for burning out terminates. It costs 6,000 requisition. I've got 33,900. This is a resource you get from completing missions. Just like medals, right? You will get requisition. You can spend requisition on all of your stratagems. And as I go through this, we're not going to look at all the stratagems, but you'll see they've all got a price attached to them. Some of them are level restricted. When you get to level 20, I'm not level 20 as of recording this. I'm level 17. Um, you've got you, you can unlock all of the stratagems, right? You've got everything is available. You just need to have the credits to unlock them. But you probably will have the credits to unlock them. I mean, look, I've got 33,900. The orbital laser only costs 10,000, you know. So I can probably buy most of the top tier stuff if I need it. But that's not to say it's better. You know, it's all for different scenarios. Like Eagle Airstrike is really good. It's really strong. The Eagle Napalm Strike's good, but this, the Eagle 500k bomb, is absolutely incredible because it can blow up Bile Titans with one hit. And I use this quite a bit because it's so powerful. It takes a long time to come in, but it annihilates those super large, massive enemies. But yeah, what I just wanted to show you here, guys, is it just costs requisition and you get this through playing the game. The next thing is ship modules. Now, these, you unlock them using these special resources. So the green, the orange, and the fluorescent pink, I guess we'll call it. So... Um, these are quite expensive, all right? And it's going to take a pretty long time to unlock all of these different uh, elements for the ship. Now, the way you get this resource is by completing, well, I guess not completing op optional object objectives, but exploring the maps. And again, this will be the thing where sometimes you'll get a squad that'll want to do that, and sometimes you'll get a squad that's just rushing for the objectives. And that's also fine, but it would be nice if we could go after more of the um, th these resources because the way this system works is... I've unlocked donation access license. So this means that support weapons deploy with the maximum number of carryable magazines. This means now I can move on to this streamlined request process, which decreases support weapon strategy and cooldown by 10%. But this costs 80 of the green thing. I think that's a common sample. And 40 of that I don't have enough. I nearly do. But you can see compared to stratagems, which I can unlock loads of them, and also um, the equipment in the battle pass with the medals, this is much slower progression. But the really cool thing with this is it actually does augment your ship. Like the ship will change when you do stuff to it. I think I can show you this. This is what I was saving this for. So synthetic supplementation. So what this does is reduces the cooldown time for sentry emplacement and resupply stratagems by 10%. This is really good, especially on defensive missions. This area of the ship, when I unlock it, if I turn around, there's nothing there. See, it says under construction. Well, when I unlock this, it will actually install it in that area of the ship. So uh, let's get the right one. I go synthetic will unlock it okay confirm now this will be behind me look it's now part of the ship this is really cool really dynamic and i and i think it's really good but yeah i think this that, that, that's as far as the game goes at the moment with its monetization its customization and its progression i think it's fun but obviously yeah we've got a bit more to talk about so let's crack on
enemy variety is awesome. So there's two different types of enemy species, I guess. You've got the Terminids, which you're seeing in this video. That is a Bile Titan being hit by an Eagle <laughs> airstrike. It's just insane. There's loads of different types of Terminids. Fast moving ones, big, heavily armored ones. Ones that charge you down. They've all got names. I don't even know what they are. It, it's Starship Troopers. It's literally Starship Troopers. Right? It's so good. And then the other enemies you get are the automatons. These are Terminator 2 style robots from Skynet. And yeah, they come in loads of different forms. They've got tanks, big robots, little robots, fast moving robots, robots with chainsaws for arms. There's loads of stuff going on. So there's only two different enemy types at the moment, or I guess species of enemies. They've all got their subtypes of, of enemy units. I expect more will get added in the future, and I'm pretty sure they will. But even right now, there's so much diversity, it feels awesome. Because you never just get attacked by one type of enemy. It'll be groups of enemies that look, might be fast moving. You'll get big units, small units. It just feels so good. But it's not just the units. It's the actual environments themselves. They're so varied. You can go from deserts. You can go to ice planets, as you see here. Jungles. It's just there's so much diversity. This, though, I want to show you guys, because this is why the game is so awesome. It makes you feel like a badass. I broke off from the enemy, well, from our team, not the enemy team. <laughs> they are our teammates, so you must remember that. Um, there's 30 seconds to go. I literally threw my orbital strike and my eagle airstrike onto that last automaton fabricator, because this mission is about killing six of their fabricators, and that was the final one. But look, there's now 19 seconds left. I'm getting in a very fast... Um, reinforcement there and then now I'm going to run towards the beacon and call in the dropship there are 10 seconds left if I get this wrong then there's no dropship and we fail this mission but I made a decision here to run over and do that and left my squad to fight all of the other killer bots as they're trying to sort of survive and uh, yeah we managed to do it and this is a moment of can I call this emergent gameplay I don't know but it's a moment of <laughs> did you just see one of our teammates go flying what was that but it it's like one of these moments where you feel like an absolute badass. It feels fun. This doesn't feel like we're just grinding away to get unlocked or whatever. It feels like we're fighting for our lives. It feels like we're fighting against an enemy that is incredibly powerful. I mean, I've got the auto cannon here, and I'm trying to hit that bot in the face. But, I mean, it's just not going to work. It's got too much armor. I need to back out of this. It's also highly dangerous because the shells could actually bounce off its armor and go into my teammates or even back at me and kill me. So basically, what I need to do is get behind this and shoot it in the weak zone. But as that's moving around over there, I've realized there's a ton of automatons pushing through that choke. And I've got a weapon that's very effective at killing these sort of lightly armored ones. So I want to try and help my team. I've got a reload and I'm trying to keep my eyes out for that massive hulk i think it's called a hulk that thing or a hulker whatever the hell it is it's a big it's going to kill you if you get close to you it will kill you with a flamethrower like it's doing to me now so i'm trying to run away luckily i didn't get set on fire there i am covered in blood probably my own blood um and yeah you can see it's running towards me and i'm like oh no so this is what i really love like the gameplay so, there's so much fun and this guy comes around the corner he gets sent back to uh <laughs> star wars <laughs> destroyed it's just so good like you can see our team have tagged that and gone uh oh he's a danger if he gets in he's going to kill us now watch this i get in behind him i just absolutely annihilate him that's his weak spot just, blo just destroy him it feels so goddamn cool this game it's really hard to get this across in words it is just it's like going into like it's just cinematic it's just a massive war the weapons feel awesome the sound design is awesome the enemies look awesome the way your character traverses around the world is awesome. This has got to be one of the best-looking third-person games. You can also go into first-person if you like. I mean, there is a bit of footage I'll show you with that a bit later on in the video. But it's just incredible. It is... You feel like a total badass. You feel like you're fighting this amazing last stand and you just about complete the mission. It's incredible. Look at teammates are diving onto the, <laughs> onto the dropship to get away. It's so good. It is just incredible. This is just cool as well. Like, there's things in the game that are just there to look cool. That's it. They've got no other function other than making you feel like a badass. And that's what the game... This is what every game should be about. I mean, in this game, you live in the fantasy of, of basically a Starship Trooper, right? And that is, this sells it. Look at that. You can see the fleet. I mean, they're obviously not player ships. They're just... 3D models out there in the skybox. They're bombarding the planet, but it really sells the atmosphere of we're part of a war. We're part of this giant sort of, I guess, living world. And that's going to lead me on to my next point because the game is alive and they've got some really cool live events. And at the moment, the automatons, well, they're attacking and they're pushing towards Super Earth. 
so this is it. Welcome to the Galactic War. Now, I'm on the bridge of my ship, and I bring up the map. And we're going to jump out of this, and we're going to go back. And we're going to go back to this. This is the Galactic War page. Now, this it's, it's the galaxy. <laughs> right. But things happen. And you'll see that there is a major order. I can't go over to it because it's going to move the camera. But in the right-hand side of the screen, there's this major order. It says the automatons have launched a cowardly surprise attack against our innocent civilian populations. Their homes must be defended. So I've got to go and win at least eight defend campaigns against the automatons. And that's what this section is over here, right? So these areas of space, these sectors, you can see... Well, there's 3,700 <laughs> hell divers there. There's 93,000 in the Tsar sector. And then there's 131,023, or 13,000, I should say. Yeah, 123 in the Severin sector. So we're under attack here, but from the automatons, right? They're pushing towards. You can see Mort. I mean, it, 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 we've got to defend that. We've got to get in there and defend it. <laughs> it's under attack. Uh, this nearly liberated there, though. This, uh, well, Ingmar's been liberated. Excellent work there. <laughs> these are not liberated though these are very much under control but we need to push the automatons back from this section to get in there and it's it's really cool like it, it really adds this fun dynamic to the game now i know if you look on the left hand side of the screen it says hell divers active enemies killed hell divers kia and bullets fired that's bugged at the moment but those numbers are, would be really high and then if you go over to the right hand side of the screen you get the terminids now this is where you got to start asking questions because um what what is actually going on here? Why are people fighting the Terminids when the automatons are, are attacking? So there's 74,000 L divers there, 52,000 there, and 12,893 there. I mean, to be, to be fair, there'll be none there because these sectors are not available yet. But like, okay, I guess there's 93,000 there. Maybe there is more people fighting the automatons. But isn't this cool? This is like, there's always going to be a point, right? You can imagine logging into the game. Oh, no, the Terminids are pushing really close to Super Earth. Maybe they're here in the Sagan sector. Oh, we really need to fight. Maybe they even make it to Super Earth. <laughs> they're on Mars. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just, honestly, this is so cool. And they've got some really cool social media that they do around this. They do these kind of like fake news updates. And they're like, oh, the automatons are attacking. Get on the game and destroy them. It, it's so good. Also, as well, you get things like weapon qualifications here. So if I kill 60 enemies with the anti-material rifle, I'll get 15 um, uh, what are they called? Uh, 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 medals, which you can use to unlock stuff in the battle pass. It's just fun. Like, everything about this game, it's just fun. <laughs> so this is a suicide difficulty mission. It's an eradicate mission. These are one of the faster missions um, that typically, well, I think it is the fastest mission you can do. Like I said, there are groups of people that go around farming these. I think that takes the fun out of the game. Yeah, do them every now and again. But, I mean, I would look at doing some of the longer missions as well. Some of them can take up to 40 minutes to complete. Really cool, like, running all over the map, firing ICBMs and all stuff like that. But anyway, I just want to show you this because it sort of, like, shows you the flow. So, the mission has been selected. I'm not in charge of this group. Um, I think, I don't know who is. Uh, maybe it's Doritos is in charge. I'm not sure. Um, but they've selected the mission. They've selected the drop point. While that was happening, we were selecting our stratagems for the mission now we're dropping onto the planet <laughs> and if you don't succeed dive dive again and 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 again so we're going to land on the planet now this is a defense mission um well we need to eradicate the the automatons but they will come towards us so i've took the mortar sentry this is a very powerful sentry i think most people in the team will probably take this but i've taken the recoilless rifle and the reason for this is you can change your play style and i'm playing against bots here i know the bots are going to be using drop ships and I'm looking for the drop ship alert. I threw a, a Gatlin turret down as well. And I've got my recoilless rifle. Uh, you can actually have an ally help you reload this faster. But generally, people want to do their own thing. It's really cool if you've got a friend in voice comms and you can work together. But I can still reload this myself um, if I take the ammunition on my backpack as I have. So what I'm looking to do here is just blow up these drop ships as they come in. Hit their engines. They're going to explode with one shot from this. And hopefully, the dropship will crash into the automatons and kill them. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. And also, sometimes you can just shoot them out of the air, and the automatons will just drop and hit the ground and die anyway. It's very powerful. But this is a different play style. Like, I'm not playing front line here. I'm playing almost like, I guess I'm like artillery in a way. I'm sort of playing from the back line. I'm going after these high-value targets. I'm trying to destroy these dropships. Now, it could be completely different. Like, here, I've absolutely shat the bed. I'm like, oh, that's a tank, and it's got a laser turret on it. So I'm just going to throw my eagle at it because that'll deal with it if it hits it head on. Um, if I could kill it with my recoilless rifle, 
but I'd have to shoot it in the back of the turret and it'd be really difficult to do that. Again, drop ships are coming in. I'm going to keep taking them out because I want them to drop onto the enemies and destroy them. Now you can see with this mission, uh, oh, well, we're getting pushed a bit here, so I had to pull out my primary weapon and just destroy that bot really fast. But I don't want that guy getting close to me with his chainsaws because he will kill me. We've got to destroy 160 automatons, right? And it, you can see it's action packed. We've destroyed, well, I've destroyed the tank there. It's looking really good. Turret's doing work. We've got some supplies down. I'm going to go and grab in the middle. It, there's just always something going on. Look at that fire going across the screen. It's like, what? Yeah, you can see there's four of these um, uh, mortar turrets. They're very, very powerful on these missions. Uh, there is a bug. I'm not sure if the bug is still in the game. And also, I'm totally blind here because I've just been hit with a chainsaw. Point blank range. I believe this is on suicide mission difficulty as well. Yeah, this is level seven difficulty. So these are quite hard missions. Um, I was lucky not to get absolutely killed there by that, to be honest. I forgot the point I was making. Oh, yeah, there was a bug where you could actually duplicate stratagems. But I think that's been fixed now. Um, but I wouldn't even... Like, it's not even... Like, it's not worth cheating. It's not worth bugging the game out. Because it just takes away from what the game is. It's so much fun. I mean, look at this, right? We, we've finished the mission. Extraction's available. Down comes the, uh, the extraction beacon. We're pulling back. We're getting ready to extract. Everything's looking jazzy. It's all looking good. I've reloaded my rifle. Or at least I'm trying to reload it now. Uh, I've decided not to. I don't know what I'm doing now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to just chuck down an airstrike. Is that an airstrike I've thrown down? Might have been a turret. Yeah, that's a turret, I think. Is it? Is it red? Uh, is it, well, whatever. I got killed by an explosion. I don't even know what that is, but all my legs and my arms and my chest are broken. I'm dead. <laughs> but look, you get more of a bonus if the whole team extracts. The team know this, so they're just going to reinforce me so I can get back onto the ship. And this is the way the game is so, you know, it's so, it's, it's so awesome. It does promote working with your team, even though you can kill your team, even though you can make it really annoying for your team. It's actually within your interest not to do that. And, and you get funny bugs like this. Like, why is that guy outside the ship? <laughs> yeah, they're all, there's little bugs and stuff like that. But, you know, we, we can just forgive them because the game's so much fun. <laughs> So that's it. That's that mission done. It's a very fast mission. Like I said, some missions can be really, really long. You can get involved in some insane firefights. If I was to show you those in this video, this video would be hours and hours long. So this is the end of mission screen. You sort of seen this a little bit earlier on in the video, but essentially this shows you you've completed the main objective, how many hell divers got out, the mission time remaining. All of this adds up to your requisition and your XP. You can see it was suicide mission difficulty. So that gives us an extra 150% on the rewards. It's a glorious victory. We've got tons of requisition there. It's the second mission in this operation. So if you complete the next one, we'll get the full bonus for the medals. You can see we got samples, which was three of the green ones, which I believe are common samples. And, and yeah, you, people's levels are going up. We're going to fly back to the ship now. And then we can look at stats. Like there is so much, like this game is really awesome at giving you stuff to do when there's downtime. So we're flying back to the ship here. Yeah, it's another cutscene. We get to see the team. These are everybody who managed to extract. If you didn't extract here, you would be sort of standing to the left if you died on the operation. Um, you wouldn't come up the nice lift or the elevator. And uh, yeah, you can check the stats out. And uh, yeah, I, I was tied first for kills there. So I think my strategy worked with uh, blowing up the dropships. It's just so cool. It hasn't all been rosy and fine, though. There have been issues, notably around the servers. Now... In their defense, this is a game they didn't expect to get as popular as it did. And when we look at some tweets here from the head of Arrowhead, uh, this is what he says. Friends of Helldivers 2, I have one final update for tonight. We have updated the max concurrent user cap to 700,000. Unfortunately, we expect the CCU to reach that level. We believe that the wait times will be much more bearable. Tomorrow, we are doing some final improvements for the weekend. All love. Now, this was from February the 23rd, and I, this video is going out... Uh, or rather, this is being recorded on the 27th of February. So, yeah, you, you, they were still struggling with server capacity. But things, um, they do get better. And then he moves on to say this on the 24th of February. We expect Helldivers 2 servers to hit the 800,000 CCU max capacity in three to four hours. There might be light queues to get in at peak. Also, how crazy is this message from a studio of under 100 developers? Now... This actually manifested in a few uh, kind of different ways. So if you had bought Helldivers, much like myself, when the game launched and wanted to play, well, tough shit, you could not play the game unless you were playing at very unsociable hours. This was not great, and I can see how that would uh, put people off the game. In fact, it resulted in a lot of people leaving negative reviews on the game uh, on Steam, although that has kind of reversed now, and it is, once again, mostly positive. As of recording of this video, you should be able to play the game if you want to actually jump on and play. You probably won't see a queue. Maybe at the weekend during primetime US, there may be a slight queue. 
Um, but I think they've pretty much got that under control. Now, like I said, this isn't in defense of them or giving them an excuse, but they are a small studio. They did not expect, like I didn't expect to get destroyed by that. <laughs> Terminated. They did not expect to have this level of interest in the game. Now, I'm sure that they believe the game that, that they made is a really fun game and they wanted people to play it, but the response has just been absolutely incredible. And I hope that throughout this video, I've kind of explained why. I know it's a fairly long video, but I did want to do this game justice because it's it's more complex than just... I mean, look at that laser. It's more complex than just saying, oh, yeah, it's a fun game. That's why people play it. Because really, all this is is a four-player co-op game where you drop down onto maps and you complete objectives, essentially against the same enemies over and over again. Every time you do it, it feels totally different. There's enough weapons to make it feel unique. There's enough biomes or different map types to make it feel unique. There's enough... Um, enemy compositions, I guess, of the different units to make it feel unique when you're fighting against enemies. There's always these moments the game creates, these like cinematic moments where things just absolutely pop off and it's like, oh my god, look at the timing of that airstrike, the timing of that orbital strike, the timing of that <laughs> auto cannon into the stairs, which killed myself. These moments are like very hard to replicate in other games. You will have fun if you like Games like this, if you want to just go in and play a co-op game where it's almost this like last stand vibe you get, even when you're on missions that are not even about defending a point or anything, it still feels like you're fighting for your life. You're going to love this game. It, it, it's absolutely incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you would like to see more content like this, then do leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. And yeah, if you're playing Helldivers 2, let me know how it's going out there, diver. Catch you on the next one.